I just really wanted to do a full review of the new Predator film, Prey, and I can't think of two better, more Irish people in the world to do it with than my guests today, Jay Hunter and Steve V1 from OSW Reviews. We're back again into the jungles of the Predator universe. How are you guys doing tonight? Yes, the knee bumping, bar munching, crisps crunching, OSW review. Just hot dog and all macho. Steve, how's it going, buddy? Not too bad at all. Delighted to be back. Had great crack chatting with you about the previous Predator movies. Four Matt, so Predator films. Four Predator, Predator movies. A uh, Predaton, I like it. So yeah, it's gonna be amaze balls shooting the shit, talking more bollocks about Predator. Can't wait. Ah, oh, Matt, great to hear from you. How are you doing, buddy? Very good. I want to say a big thank you because about two months ago, Jay, you made a tweet just like, hey, check out this Predator. Like, it's already been out for like uh, two years or something like that, maybe even three by now. Well, whenever God, the, the Predator came out in theaters. But you did that little tweet and that like significantly bumped up that video. There was a bunch of people who were just all flooding in going, oh, I had no idea about this. Oh, I had no idea that the Predator even came out. So I <laughs> wow. completely skipped by me. So a lot of people were able to rediscover how bad that movie was uh, via that video. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Log on and witness our sadness. <laughs> <laughs> it was an outpouring of grief. <laughs> So, Prey, I have a lot of mixed feelings about not not so much the film itself, but how it was introduced and how people were even told about it. So I'm going to go through a little brief history of the genesis of this film. Its concept was brewing since around 2016. It was a shared idea between the director of this film, Dan Trachenberg, who previously directed 10 Cloverfield Lane, and even the very first episode of The Boys and uh, his writing partner, Patrick Eisen, they gave this idea to 20th Century Fox and the the longtime Predator producer has been producing all these films since the original from 1987, John Davis. They pitched him this idea while The Predator was still in production. So that's pretty amazing. Just like the, that movie's not even out yet and we're already pitching for another one. So they brought them this idea and then 20th Century Fox and John Davis were all like, go for it. So <laughs> it got greenlit around that time and, you know, its production, whatever would be be later in the year. But that's the way it kind of started. But no one knew about that at the time that something else was brewing until a couple of years later. When was the first time you guys heard about this film, like in any guise, because it had a weird period where it wasn't even named Prey, it was named something else, and they were trying to hide it from people? Yeah, so they started work in 2016 on it, and then December 2019, it was called Skulls. And then they marketed it without saying that it's Predator, and then Skull, they changed it to Prey in November 2021. And that's when I heard, oh, a Predator film. Okay. Oh, uh, I only heard about this a couple of weeks ago. I didn't know that they were making it. And then I heard about it and I was like, oh my God, there's a new Predator movie coming out. It's going to be amazing. I was like, I can't wait to get my ticket and to go to the cinema. And then I literally only found out about two or three weeks ago that, no, 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 this is coming right out on Hulu or over in Ireland. It dropped on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, me too. And I was like, oh my God, this is all happening very quickly. And I got quite excited. Was it 2K, 4K, or what did they have in it? 4K. Oh my god, so opening day, 4K home video release. Pretty much, yeah. Stream it right now. Yeah. Oh my god. Get on my Sony Bravia now. (laughs) I'm of two minds about that. I absolutely want something available in the home on day one, but... If it's a movie you're really looking forward to, and if there's people that are just like, oh, I'll just go to the cinema, I don't don't care. It'd be ideal if you could have a day and day in both. So everyone has the option to go see it in, in whatever format they prefer. And it is a little weird for a franchise like Predator that, you know, is well known to be exclusively in the home. Yeah. Because this movie was delayed considerably due to the uh, pandemic mania that was running wild (laughs) during the course of like 2020 and 2021. They're going to start production at the start of 2020. 
And then they're like, uh, yeah, maybe not. Let's let's wait a bit. So they resumed uh, filming later in 2021. And I found this was weird. It was completely filmed in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. <gasps> I don't know how close to the dungeon, but it, 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 thereabouts. She should have stretched them. <laughs> But I was actually there in, in Alberta, Canada, not too long ago. I was, in, I was in the mountains and stuff doing some touristy things. And it was just kind of surreal to only a month later watch a movie that was very much in the same mountain ranges and things. Quite pretty out there. So I can see why they, they would want a, you know, still outside exotic location that's out in the wilderness, but be very different from all the other jungles and forests we've seen in Predator movies before. Uh, Jay mentioned how this was called Skulls. It was, and their intention was to either always call it Skulls or change to prey, but they did not want to reveal the Predator in any marketing at all, not even in trailers and stuff. They wanted this to be, you go to the theater and you get surprised or you hear from word of mouth, which I think in the entirety of the movie and even video game industries, this has never worked <laughs> and it only pisses people off. That sounds like a very bizarre business choice. I think the only time I can ever think of something even close to that that worked would have been the Blair Witch. And that's like a long time ago. Like, like that's a different world where... Predator in that? He should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Predator, Blair Witch. <laughs> you think you're special. <laughs> you think you're special. You do. You brought up Blair Witch, Steve, and that's exactly what I was going for because that movie was called The Woods until the week it came out. Oh. Oh. And they premiered it at like a Comic Con or something. And then guess what? That movie made like not nearly as much money as it should have considering the original Blair Witch. Uh, you know, made like over a hundred million easily on like a, you know, $5 budget. Um, so it, it, it yeah. I, I get where a marketing guy goes, oh, this will be good. And like everyone will, will get buzz. You can't artificially create buzz by deception and hiding <laughs> things. You, you know what I mean? Like marketing people get a little crazy where they're like, oh, this will be really good. I'll, this will pop the boys. And, and like Jay <laughs> said, it's going to pop 50% of them 50% of the time. The, the name Prey, I'm also like, you know what? I guess that's the best you can do because you can't call it Predator 3 because it's not. And you're already used plurals with predators, and you already used a the, unless you called it predator and generic subtitle, resurrection. Oh, man. You could have gone uh, reboot and just call it predator, or you could have gone the Xbox route and call it predator O-N-E. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I thought you were going to say predator 360. <laughs> <laughs> what about a uh, predator? I think it's a thing like, you know, Limp Biscuit, And it's like, we want to be next to Limp Biscuit. Let's call ourselves Linkin Park LI. And we're right beside him in the music store. Oh, okay. So Predator, Prey. So we're right beside him on, you know, iTunes or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get that. And like uh, Linkin Park had a couple different band names before they settled on that. So I, I could see them thinking like, how do we ride the coattails here? So that's, that's a good point. Amber Midthunder was announced in the starring role of this movie. And her mm. biggest parts up to this point were in the TV shows uh, Roswell, New Mexico, which uh, people have told me is quite good. And she was a main cast member in one of the most obscure X-Men productions of all time, Legion, the TV show. Fun fact, though, about Amber Midthunder, who plays the main character, Naru, she's actually going to be in Avatar 2 whenever that releases this November, next year's November, or the November after that. We don't know. She's actually going to be playing one of the blue cat people who's who's... The race, I honestly forget their name. I always... The Navi. Navi. I know, because they stole it from Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, the Navi! Yes, yeah. of course. So, hey, Mortal Kombat fans, Amber Midthunder is the daughter of one David Midthunder, who provided the facial capture for Nightwolf in Mortal Kombat 11. Wow. Ah, awesome. I was going to say, her name is awesome is the coolest what a what a bad ass name to have mid thunder are you kidding me 
I want it. <laughs> it's so awesome. Maybe he can marry her and then take her name. Oh. Wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Caroline. Steve, Steve Midthunder doesn't sound nearly yeah. as, 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 as intimidating. <laughs> Only after a hearty meal. <laughs> <laughs> the predator in this film is played by a, a fellow named Dane DiLiegro, a seven foot tall former basketball player who has some experience working in monster suits. He played the alien that steals Doja Cat's cat Starscream in one of her music videos. Nice. <laughs> He's just like this generic looking Star Trek alien. He's like, I have your cat. And then that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and he just gets jobbed out. Um, so for all intents and purposes, Prey is a prequel. Like the first movie that takes place at the earliest part of the timeline. Pretty sure there's several comics that predate this, but it takes place in 1719 in the Great Plains of America and follows two main characters, Naru, a Comanche woman, and probably the best movie character of all time, the invincible, incredible, Sorry the Dog. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, he's awesome. They Roman reigns the shit out of this dog. <laughs> like, oh, man, every time he comes into the scene. He's the big dog. The big, big dog. <laughs> Uh, Nehru wants to prove to her tribe that she can do more than mix herbs or cook and to do so she wants to participate in a ritual where she needs to hunt and kill something that is hunting her and this will show her tribe that she's a capable hunter slash warrior I sure hope that in the infinite reaches of space someone or something can grant her that wish and that's the <laughs> basic setup what do you what do you got for me Jay you just have a quick tittle on the Kumanji sure could you ask me uh, who or what is the Comanche? Jay, who or what is the Comanche? I'm glad you asked, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> A Native American tribe, 17,000 strong, spread across the great southern plains of Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico, which is uh, an authentic accent. <laughs> uh, their headquarters is in Lawton, Oklahoma. Their boom period was in the 18th to 19th century, where they were living that nomadic horse culture life and hunting bison. Not M. Um, <laughs> then us smelly Europeans came over and messed everything up with our diseases, warfare and such. And by the 1870s, they settled in Indian reservations. Now, I had a quick look. Uh, I was just thinking about representation in video games. Like, I couldn't find any of specifically Comanche. But uh, what do you think? Any, any Native Americans? Assassin's Creed 3 would Very be good. the first one that comes to mind. Go on. Uh, Turok. Turok, yeah. Uh, who's, in, who's in Turok? Turok is in Turok. <laughs> Bill Turok. Uh, yes, and dinosaurs. <laughs> There's a video game called Prey from 2006 where you play as a as a Native American no way. Uh, guy named Tommy and you fight aliens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with, yeah yes. With yes. portals. Yeah. Yes. It's I, I really, really like that. Game. Yeah, he's a mechanic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Night Wolf in Mortal Kombat 3, a Lakota Sioux warrior slash shaman. Red Dead Revolver, Red Harlow is half Native American. Red Dead Redemption has Nasus, who shares John Marson's resentment towards the government and helps him out. And Red Dead 2 has Rapiti Indians led by Rain's Fall. And, oh, infamous Two Second Son. His main character, Delson, and his bro, Reggie, are members of the fictional tribe, the Akomish. That's right. Huh. I, sh I should have remembered that because they have my surname. Ah, yeah, and of gross. course, <laughs> we're not breezing by pop culture Native Americans without talking about WWF. Tatanka. <laughs> Buffalo. Buffalo. I have here countdown before there's a Tatanka reference. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Tatanka. <laughs> Just gotta get in there. Can we please stop talking about him? Okay, that's all my notes. There you go. I was like, man, okay, here, I, I did some homework. I need to prove to you that I did some homework. <laughs> no, you, you, you very much did. You don't have Thunder, though, from Killer Instinct. <gasps> Chief Thunder. Oh, no. Where is he? Oh my god. And <laughs> hey, hi, hey. Yeah, yeah. And I. T Hawk. The T -Hawk. biggest of them all. The shit. Of, I hated T Hawk. I, I couldn't use him. He's from uh, Mexico. Uh, M. Bison took his land. Yeah. Uh, not not him personally, but, you know, <laughs> the lads in the Shadow Loop. Yeah. Whatever did this, I can kill him. Ah! 
Naru, we start off with Naru seeing a predator ship skimming through the clouds, and she assumes it's some type of sign, like a, a coming. It's so cool. She's like, I saw a sign from the Thunderbird. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Thunderbirds are go. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> <deep> t- <laughs> Could she see the string? Like? <laughs> uh, there's a neat detail where it shows the ship is dumping the predator into the forest. He's not landing this ship himself. So along with this predator's lack of trophy skulls, that this is his first official hunt. Yep. He's like a he's like a really green wrestler being shoved out of the gorilla position. <laughs> Just get the <laughs> fuck out of there. I mean, that's a really awesome point because both of them are basically on their maiden hunt, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. It's very cool. I do love that we're five mainline films deep into the franchise. So there's no mystery or suspense. Like the ship flies off on land. Predator just reveals himself. Here's where I'm hunting. Strap yourself in. Yeah. Let's do it. Once Nehru sees uh, this sign, she's all juiced up on hunting lust. So she convinces her brother Tabe to take her on a hunting party, track down a murderous mountain lion. And while doing such, she notices big tracks made by a huge animal she doesn't recognize. And she's all like, dudes! There's something else out here. Not feeling great about this. To which every character, even her own mom, responds to her by saying, but you're just a girl. Oh, I love that. It's so funny because <laughs> like she's skulking in the back and it was like, we don't want you here. And it's like, we don't need a cook. <laughs> <laughs> Says the jerk pack that's definitely going to die. <laughs> totally. It's a bit heavy handed with the, you know, I'm just Here's a the girl. girl living in the forestry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, I know that they have to set up this background that she has to overcome, not only, you know, her own kind of first hunt, but the thoughts and beliefs of everybody else. The prejudices. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, you don't have to smack me over the face with a Dan. I you know? do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they hammer it a little, a little bit too much because we've seen this trope Lots of times before, like Mulan, you know, lots of movies are just like, you can't do this thing. And like even, you know, other movies like Star Wars, like Luke, you're just a moisture farmer. You'll (laughs) never fly an uh, an X-Wing. And, you know, like, so they track down this uh, mountain lion. Uh, He kind of ambushes them all. Naru, she takes a big bump on the back of the head. Oh, she is dead. Okay, th- th- this is the first part where she takes a big bump on the back of the head, gets knocked out, and the movie does a little thing here. I'm like, eh, does not make much sense? She wakes up back at her village, and they're just like, oh, you got knocked out. Your brother carried you all the way back here, then went back to finish off the lion. You know, I, I could have used a scene where her vision's all blurry and she sees her brother picking her up, maybe even in the first person. And then you see the lion scamper away, but they just cut. They just hard cut to her waking up. And I was like, uh, I feel like you could have used some connective tissue there. Yeah, like 10, 12 seconds. Of yeah, that, that's all. What you just said. We grant you. Yeah. Would have been perfect. Yeah. Also, like, why would the big bad lion who is taking out loads of people just exactly leg it off? You know what I mean? I was thinking the predator would show up for a bit and then the lion would get all scared off. Like he'd smell the predator's stink lines and just be like, oh, 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 no, oh, I'm fucking not. And just like leaves, you know? Brilliant. Mm. Uh, So the next scene that we see is actually like pretty badass where her brother comes back into the village and he's holding the lion's corpse. And I think he's decapitated it. He did. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Holding its head. So everyone's just freaking out. And she's kind of like, I sent something else out there. I saw a track that didn't quite match up. So the next uh, morning, she decides to go on the hunt herself with the amazing, the incredible Sari the dog. And of course, she fashions herself a little scorpion spear, which will come in handy later. I love that little rope thing that she, she makes. It's an awesome tool. It's great stuff. It actually makes more sense to me than Scorpion Spear because it's a lot heavier looking. Like Scorpion Spear is just like a little a knife, essentially. So there's not a lot of weight if you were to like throw it. But in like an axe, it's like weighted differently. And when they're throwing it around, you can clearly see that some elements of it are CG. But I believed it. And it's kind of her specialty weapon for most of the film. Like she grabs other things here and there, but you always know that she's got that in the back pocket. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I thought that just this point where she's going out with Seti and going across the Great Plains, like, get really nice traveling music. 
And it's very atypical for a predator because you just think of the strings and the da 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 And then this actually nice, big, rounded, cinematic. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I was about to say, it's like it'll just be the Hobbit. She just walks and walks and walks. <laughs> yeah, she's going to Isengard. <laughs> a drink all day. <laughs> she's tossing plates around. <laughs> Meanwhile, while she's doing this, the Predator has been grinding XP by killing low-level enemies. <laughs> uh, but it's nice. You see a progression of, like, he, he kills a snake, and then after that, he has, like, a big showdown in an open plane with a wolf. And the wolf is like, I can do this, no problem. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I can't see this thing, but I can, bam, just takes out the wolf in one shot. And I was like, th- that's when you know, it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to see the Predator killing a bunch of, like awesome strong animals and you very much get that yeah i like the way predator is not species racist (laughs) he's He's, like he's literally out there looking for badass animals that he can fight and prove that he is the best you know and there's an awesome visual where the wolf actually gets in a bite and he like turns around and he snarls and you can see that there's the green blood on his teeth. Mm-hmm. I was like, that yeah. is cool. Mm. I really like this. They do it with a rat and then there's a cobra snake and then the snake gets skewered in the head by the predator. And then they have the rabbit who's being hunted by the wolf. And then it turns on predator vision. Ah, shit, you know, not, not your lucky day, mate. <laughs> uh, but it's like, there's always a bigger fish. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah, it's, it kind of demonstrates the food chain, you know, like when a shark reaches up and like grabs a gorilla, you know, like that type of stuff. Uh, <laughs> really? Nehru then happens to stumble upon a pretty shocking sight, a whole field of skinned what, Jay? Oh, Tatanka. <laughs> <laughs> Bull buffalo. So I really like this scene because, of course, it plays with your expectations here. You're like, well, what skins creatures? She assumes that it's this weird creature that she hasn't seen yet, that yep. that this creature is getting busy consistently and thoroughly. But it might not turn out to be such. Nero then keeps moving forward as she finds a bog. And as she moves through it, she sinks lower and lower, getting covered in mud. And of course, I'm like tapping my nose going, oh, she's getting covered in mud, huh? I wonder what we're going to do here. She's clearly going to, uh, you know, dive in and uh, I'll just grab my leg and pull it out. (laughs) She could cut a bit of turf while she's down there, <laughs> yeah. you know, stock up for the winter. Yeah. This is only one of the, like, I have very little complaints about the film, but this is going to, two, one of, one of them is just like, she falls into quicksand mud here and a bit on the nose, you know, fighting against the flow of her life and the flow of the mud and overcomes it. It's a, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit on the nose, you know. It also feels like it kind of happens out of nowhere. It wasn't like she was running from something and she falls into the mud, which would be a bit more accidental and organic it's just kind of like oh there's a bog i'm gonna walk right into it i don't know about you guys but growing up and watching cartoons and stuff during your formative years you tend to think that quicksand's gonna be a huge problem going forward in your life You're like oh god quicksand it never really comes up as an adult <laughs> you never have to worry about it. But like every cartoon every show oh quicksand i've been carrying this um, lasso around for nothing <laughs> It moves on into the bear scene. And this is where Sorry the Big Big Dog dog. comes into play. It distracts this bear, so it loses interest in Naru because she's about to try to shoot an arrow and it's gob. I think she's like holding the the bow too tight and she kind of fumbles it a little bit. I guess I would be nervous too if I was about to shoot a grizzly. Uh, So it comes up on her, Nero distracts the bear for like 10 seconds, but then the dog leads the bear right back to her. (laughs) Just like Radagast. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) In the first half. Leading the wargs. That's brilliant. Uh, So she legs it, quickly dives underwater, and then goes into a beaver den. Beavers, unlike quicksand, are a huge problem all throughout North America. They fuck up everything with their dams. Like, people can't get their water because the beavers have put dams everywhere. Little bastards. What we have, we have a Canadian treat here called Beaver Tails. And they're they're not actually beaver tails, of okay, course, okay. but they're like just a fried breaded, like it's like French bread almost. And you put like 
candies and chocolate over it and it's like sounds it's amazing. served warm it's, sounds very it's nice. the only thing beavers have given back to the world with you know <laughs> okay so she goes on into this uh, uh beaver den and the bear is trying to scrape at her trying to get her and she's cornering you can just feel the anticipation what could possibly stop this bear because uh, her options are are running low so therefore we are treated to a predator versus bear fight what are your guys thoughts on this scene I was like, yeah, fucking let's do it. Bear is big and scary. Predator is big and scary. He's in his natural environment. You're in a new one. Let's do it. I, like, I don't have a joke about it. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> G- gave it to me. Yeah. I was very, very hyped. Obviously, so far, he's killed a rat. He's killed a snake. And he's killed a dog. And, you know, like, the dog could probably kill most people. You know, if we didn't have... He'd be some loser. Weapons. To lost, though. Yeah. To the wolf, yeah. <laughs> but the fucking bear is monstrous it's bigger it's heavier it's girthier it's thicker it's stronger than the actual predator turgid <laughs> it's meatier <laughs> and uh he gives it a decent L scrap and he gets the upper hand and he probably would have killed it if predator you know like wasn't cloaked you know yeah, the predator hulked up yeah, I think he's a bit of a coward, this predator. Like, whenever things are going a bit sideways, he'll just turn on his invincible eagle. Whole block, you know, up, up, down, high punch. Turn invisible. <laughs> yeah, mm, not liking that. He, he, one of the fighters later calls him a cheater for it. He's like, yes! That's awesome. Cheater. It's like, I, I, I was dropped in here with the weapons. They were all cleared with my bosses. I can <laughs> use them. <laughs> oh, it's probably like reptile then. Like, it's just part of his moveset. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> So this fight climaxes in the predator lifting the grizzly bear that's over a hundred pounds, clear over his head, big George Costanza (laughs) energy here. Jerry and Elaine are trying to set up George with one of Elaine's friends and they have to tell the other one about the positives of each person. So she's like, oh, so he's fat. And Elaine's like, no, he's powerful. He One time he lifted a hundred pounds over his head. And that's all she can say about it. <laughs> that was an awesome visual. Yeah. As he's holding this bear over his head and the blood is gushing out, covering him. Blech. And I think it's the first time in the movie that we actually get to see him, right? Yeah, f- yeah, front kind of. It's, but he's still obscured a bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's really cool. It's like very, very memorable part of this movie. That blood sensually cascades down his body. Like this is like soak it all in, you know? <laughs> I have to say, Naru there, she is great at doing the kind of bug eyes. You know, yeah. just wide-eyed stare, terrified. Awesome at it. Yeah, really, really yeah. good. She does it like multiple times throughout the film. Yeah. In a movie where the script is, you know, like it's not that large, you know, it's probably uh, smaller than your two pages of notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need to it's have an five. actor who can do it all without saying words. And her eyes are expressive. Mm. And the like way that her hair falls down on her face and she's got the makeup that goes across her eyes and there's one that kind of goes up at an angle Mm -hmm. and so whenever the camera is actually on her you are drawn to her eyes and so yeah it's done really well and she's fantastic in it Mm. i do love my just favorite bit of this so now she's hiding amongst the sticks in the dam and the dead bear smashes through it like breaking it open yeah and then is pulled away like that's straight horror movie yeah uh, like a shark Mm. pulling back its meal into the water kind of thing and it's like it's very cool really cool yeah so when she sees this, she's understandably upset. So she she goes <laughs> ready, she goes ready back into the forest and meets up with her brother's hunting party. She explains uh, what she saw, but they're all like, "But you're just a girl." Whack a woe, hey hey! The predator runs in, <laughs> hits the ring, decimates everyone. Like like what? Four or five of these guys just takes them apart really really fast. And in the confusion, Nehru is just like, this is not great. So she leaves, gets caught in an animal trap thing, and she she just kind of gets knocked out again. Yeah, it's like the dog in Resident Evil 4. You know, it's one of those traps. Yeah, Where it yeah. catches your leg. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, it's a really cool gimmick, and she kind of learns that the predator is here to hunt, and it's not here to just kill. 
That's a really, really nice touch. Mm. So the lads catch up the Nauru to bring her home, but find a boss fight instead. <laughs> Quickie recap on weapons the Predator has. Sure. Okay, Predator 1, Plasma Caster. That's the laser cannon on your shoulders. And loads of films. Giant wrist blades, you know. Self-destruct, of course. Predator 2, it's got a spear gun. It's like the, you know, the needler from Halo. I think. Mm. Smart disc, the poncy little boomerang disc <laughs> <laughs> i like the disc i think it's i think it's neat it's like a marge simpson with the potato <laughs> I think it's neat. Oh, uh net gun uh the cyrax net launcher that thing's cool yeah uh energy flechette that's the shit plasma caster and combi stick a retractable telescopic spear it's so awesome to get many yeah it's pretty cool in predators they add a remote bomb self-explanatory the predator came to earth almost empty-handed but has a harpoon from his wrist and also a uh, shuriken and in prey this one adds arrows mm. takes your man out who he holds his hands up and there's like arrows it's quite funny because he's like he must only have three because he's like i need those back please you know <laughs> walks back picks them up yeah. <laughs> and uh, also a cut clamp a rope that ties you up and a telescopic shield yeah. Oh, the shield is awesome. Yeah, it's really shield. cool. You know, for a defensive weapon, they use it very offensively. Yes. <laughs> There's one I have to, a special shout out, not a mainline movie, but in Alien vs. Predator Requiem, the really, Whoa. really bad one, he has a razored whip, which Ooh. is like that weapon is wasted in that movie. Well, most things are wasted in that movie, <laughs> but like a raise, like it's a Simon Belmont Castlevania whip. It's just made out of metal and it's just barbed. Like it's so cool. And he just wraps it around something and pulls and it, the thing just falls apart. Nice. And I'm like, ah, oh, that needs to come back. <laughs> I want to see that again in a movie where I can actually see it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so much better than the whip that Dolph Lundgren got in Masters of the Universe. Like he's being held captive, and they whip him, and he kind of turns into it because he likes it. <laughs> when Naru awakens, she finds herself locked in a cage by Ryan Probear's ancestors. What do you hear in the background? Just the scoffing of cloves of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually French fur traders. And as revealed by the heel leader of the bunch, who is wearing a buffalo pelt, are the ones responsible for the uh, Tatanka massacre out in the field. So even more so than the Predator, like these are the real villains here because anyone from Europe that were like fighting with the Comanche, they knew how much they relied on buffaloes for food, for whatever. So they would just massacre fields of them so they wouldn't get any resources from them. Oh, tap the temple. Tap le, <laughs> le tete. Tap le tete. <laughs> so speaking of le tete, these are some of the worst French accents I've heard in a while. I don't know whether these are supposed to be like the Quebecers, like the tag team <laughs> or whatever. But like these are English people that are speaking French. I mean, it's a really minor point, and most Americans will be like, "Yeah, that's French, Bapa de Boopy." <laughs> um, for me, like I was like, uh, yeah, "It's just I, I want them to stop talking," you know? Yeah, yeah, like you get most of it from their actions as well, yeah. like shouting "Savage, it's savage!" Uh, like Ralentiers, uh, slow down, je vais le tuer, I'm gonna kill her. But like he's got, "Oh, I'm gonna get you!" And then no, your man's no, no, no. So obviously. You know what he's saying, you don't need it. I did like Fela Sonia, make it bleed. Did like, oh. eh, but leaving her French. Yeah, yeah. I noticed there was a part where the leader calls her dog. Then there's the guy who turns around when, you know, like he sees everybody uh, dead and he goes, mailed. <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant. laughs> These guys were the, the French criminals that adopted Bart when he went to Paris. <laughs> <Don't alone. laughs> La prison! <laughs> no, the <la> antifreeze! <laughs> so, Brilliant. Again, it's it's a really minor point, but I was just like, eh, you know, like you know, 90% of the audience is probably not going to really notice. Yeah. But um, in this Fur Trapper's uh, camp, we see that her brother Tabe was captured as well. And the Trapper's plan is to use both of them as bait because they're aware that the Predator is out there. But of course, they have no idea how the Predator thinks or works because this plan is not going to end well <laughs> at all. That's no yeah. one for me, brother. <laughs> so the Predator, even though they're lying in wait to Pearl Harbor the Predator, <laughs> the Predator is going to Pearl Harbor them from behind ah. and... 
Uh, thus ensues one of the uh, craziest fight scenes I, I've seen in you know a good little, little while. But essentially, of the franchise itself, it's just that one side view, that one like old boy camera angle of the predator just moving to the left, just murking everyone one after the other. It was awesome. Oh, it's so cool! And it got my favorite jobber of the film, which is the guy that goes, "Oh, Salopar! It's a bastard!" and <laughs> They throw like a bear yeah. trap at his face. That was and awesome. Bang. Oh yeah, yeah, that oh, was God. such a badass. This scene was so fucking cool. It was the first time that he dropped down, cloaking went off. We get to see him in his full gear. You know, we get to see his new mask and just wreck shop. Absolutely smashes everybody. No one stands a chance except for the guy who has like one shot in a musket. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Psh. and then hang on, hang on, and he just starts getting his soot and starts fucking back it's up. Brilliant. That was perfect because that was probably the only real let's play this for laughs type thing. Like maybe there's a little bit of banter between her and her brother that was like, hey, it's a little jokey, but this is a great sight gag. Just look how bad our technology is. Like Arnold couldn't beat the uh, predator with like a machine gun. And this guy's like just mm, mm. using his blunderbuss or, or the, <laughs> the Flintstock pistol. And it was it was pretty funny. It got a good laugh out of me. And they're fighting in Silent Hill as well. Just everything's so smoky and ashy and they're out in like a burnt out forest, I think. I think that's what they're going for. Yeah. You upside down. And that just like added so well to it. It was very cool looking. It's probably a very small area which they filmed in. So it's like, let's just mm. put up the fog, you know. Just like it's, it, they were shooting in a PS2 environment. <laughs> <laughs> so Naru and Tabe are able to free themselves during all of this because the Predator is uh, kind of occupied. And it's nice because Tabe has a has a minute where he tells her that she has good instincts and, and sees things that he sometimes misses. So it's a nice confidence booster for her. She runs back to the trapper's camp. You got to do that side mission and rescue your dog. You know, you got to get that XP. It's just sitting there waiting for you. But then she stumbles across one of the least villainous of the trappers, a guy that uh, can speak her language. And he's begging. He's begging her like, ah, you got magic powders and stuff. Please save me. He's got his leg cut off. And he goes, eh, yeah, if you save my life, uh, I, uh, what do I have? Uh, I'll teach you how to use a pistol. You know, uh, you know, which also she literally just watched people try to shoot this big hulking space yep. alien and fail miserably. Listen, that's all I got, mate. Yeah, you know, I, I've got like a you know bus ticket with two trips left on it. You know, <laughs> you could be like, you know, you can have some of my smelly cheese. You know, <gasps> oh, hey, I, I have some diseases from them. Europe. Do you want them? Mon fromage. <laughs> <laughs> So the predator eventually shows up, uh, Nehru hides, and the trapper just plays dead. One of the medicines, it's it's a little bit of a, a side plot here where one of her medicines actually like drops your body temperature. Is that real? Is nah. Have you guys ever heard of like a, a compound you can just ingest that drops your body temperature so low, but it doesn't kill you? No. Nah. All I'm thinking of is like the trototoxin with the blowfish poison, which would slow your heart rate, it, yeah. which would lower your temperature and you'd look mm -hmm. like you're dead. But like, I think it the bollocks here. Magic it, woman here. It's okay. very, very much, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood. Uh, gizmo. I'm okay with it, you know, because that, like in the first movie, you know, they have the mud, you know, which that means that he can't see them. And now which they have also with the, the heat vision. Yeah. yeah. And so now they have this gizmo, which means that the heat vision won't work. Because okay. when, usually when he puts it on, it's like, oh, she's uh, 400 degrees turning, <laughs> stewing in her own <laughs> juice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait to see if the Predator goes back to his camp and uses his oxygen tent. <laughs> Question for you, Matt. Yeah. Do you prefer Predator with or without the skull mask? What's cooler? I think with the mask on, he's scarier because you can't see eyes. It's almost like alien-esque, like a, like a xenomorph. You can't really hmm. see where he's looking at. So it's a bit more unnerving. They definitely uglified him. Like he puts the ugly in ugly motherfucker here. <laughs> His eyes are more on the side, which has like a hammerhead shark type of effect. So he definitely looks like more bizarre and, and a little more 
you know, like it's not the familiar predator face exactly, but I still think the the mask that only covers like the front top, like his forehead and his eyes, and he still has the mandibles coming down. So you get that like extra aggression of them going down. So I think with the mask, he looks cooler. Hmm. What do you think? I would say least favorite is face and then skull mask and then kind of metal mask is my favorite. Mm. Okay. I think yeah, there was a great point is if he has the mask on, you know that there's something horrendous underneath it. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I have to say, I uh, didn't like the dodgy CGI predator face when he goes, rah, it's like, oh, that was a bit bollocks, mate. CGI in this movie is probably one of the weakest parts of it. The mountain lion at the beginning is very ropey and the bear yeah, yeah. is okay. Mm. And then yet, yeah, like you said, the face is not great. Like they had the prosthetic in 1987 and it's like, well, you know, that's 25 years ago. Mm, what have you got yeah. now? You know, do you know how you'd solve that? Film it in the dark, like AVP. Oh, just yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah save just money on the turn that brightness down, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's like the opposite of filming Samurai Cop, where it's all during the day. Let's film it all at night, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, Naru runs to the camp. Mm-hmm. Throughout this movie, we've seen her fail to hunt a deer. We've seen her fail to hunt rabbits. We've seen her fail to shoot the... Bear. The bear, yeah. We've basically seen her not prove anyone wrong that she could be a badass and a hunter. But then she gets into the camp... And she is John Wick with an axe. Mm. And she takes out like six dudes and uh, diving and flipping around. And I was like, it's a cool looking scene. I don't believe it. I don't think you've earned it. You don't think she just had constantly like her EX meter filled and she's just... (laughs) (laughs) I think showing a progression where she failed to get this thing, but the next one she did a bit better. Next one she did a bit better. I I think there's a scene where she's eating some rabbits and she says to her dog, like, you hunt next time. But it it didn't show her hunting the rabbit. It just cuts to her cooking them. And I'm like, okay, well, you could have shown, you know, rabbits, they're they're hard to probably get. They're fast. They're quick. You know? Yeah. it, It felt a little like something was chopped out here and there. So Tabe also runs in via horse, a lovely horse, and <laughs> her and him have a go to get on the predator. Tabe tries his best, but succumbs to it. I think he gets killed by the predators, just like, oh, I've had enough of this, and just kills him with the with his wrist blades, I think. I think uh, yeah, he, he just gets hit by the plot. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing really well. You know, he was getting in hits, you know, jumping off the horse Big with combos. a spear and yeah getting in the combos and then predator went boop 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 and he cloaked and then he came up from behind him and got him with the wrist fang blade things it's a bit cheap yeah not really a a spoiler for the rest of the movie but i'm super glad that the bomb the actual like mini nuke i'm i'm so sick of that yeah 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 that's the ultimate like you didn't like a little kid going you didn't win and then just presses the the button (laughs) So I'm super glad they didn't go back to that. Well, Nara then uh, runs off uh, and it's kind of, I think the, the day has progressed a little bit and she sees the boss trapper, the original guy that was uh, slagging her off about all types of stuff. And he's recovering from the fight, somehow got away from the earlier fight where the predator was murking everybody. And he's just on a stream at, at, at like a babbling brook. So Nara just comes up and I like this bit, like, because it's like, yeah, he gets his comeuppance. And she decides to use him as bait, cuts his leg off and smartly like this is like, oh, God, that's good. Gives him an unloaded pistol because that's what the Predator needs to actually take the bait. This guy actually had the grossest bit of the whole film where he has his maimed leg and there's like he wakes up and there's a rat gnawing at it. Like, Oh, my God. And he's like, Zoot <laughs> Tour de France. <laughs> uh, so the predator goes in for the bait. Nehru walks up behind him and blah, blah, just shoots him in the back of the head. This is where she takes the helmet and runs off with it. And this anchors up the predator's blood, fills him with maximum amount of piss and vinegar. This is my theory on this. Like this, this has angered him so much that he's just making mistakes under the guise that this is his first hunt and it's not going great right now he's a rookie there's a bunch of choreographed spots here hey can i call this yeah sure yeah i I was actually really impressed by this like to beat the predator she'd have to do multiple things all successfully in a row and she does Mm. shoots him back of the head steals his tech helmet 
Pearl Harbor him from above, stabby, stabby, stab, have Predator jump onto a tree that she has put wooden stakes on, stab him with a spear to cut his arm off, rip out a tooth and shove it into his eye, tag team him with the dog slide underneath, stabbing his leg and hang him, timber dropping him into the quicksand mud trap, and finally use his own weapon against him. And it's like green tick, 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 tick. <sighs> and she does it. Phew, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> my, my only thing with this is that what is in here, that entire sequence you described is great. I feel it just goes a little bit too fast. Like they're constantly, constantly uh, going towards the finish. I feel, <laughs> uh, I think like an extra five minutes of maybe a little bit more stalking, trying to figure out where each of them are. Like she's hiding in a tree or something, you know, just something, a little bit of a callback to when before Schwarzenegger has his actual fist fight with the president where they just kind of they don't know where each other is and kind of trying to figure out the you know where they're hiding mm-hmm. I could have done with something like that because this is this is like really quick sequence like it's almost less than five minutes I kind of feel but like what's in here is really good it's like really impressive I'm not sure if any CG was used and and overall the CG you guys said was a little bit ropey and it is it's still I watched for the purposes of this review. I watched the predator again, oh. like a week ago. The CG is way worse in that. Like I kind of forgot. It's been like three years since I watched it, but I was like, Oh man, the big useless predator towards the end. Like it's so rough there. So while this isn't perfect, isn't top shelf CGI. It, it's better than that one. Okay. Matt, how was uh, your man army guy? He's like surfing on top of the predator ship going, whoa. <laughs> how was that <laughs> uh, because, because they got too ambitious with it they're like oh we need to have spaceships and explosions it's like no no studio is going to give you the amount of money that would make that look as convincing as possible so just don't attempt big things like that and that's why this movie succeeds for so much of it because it's a much more intimate setting just the way it's shot and everything and and this sort of more let's take the last half of the first movie where it's just Arnold facing out with the predator and let's build around that. Let's try to get that atmosphere going. And and I think they, they succeed. Yep. Mm. I am with you. I, Fine. <laughs> I thought that the final boss battle here was done really well. It put Naru over as being super smart and having planned everything out. I do wish that we got a montage of her making traps and oh, her yeah. setting up things. That would have been nice. Maybe, you know, you, you do one or two spots, hide, take a breather, and then go out and do the next thing. But overall, I still thought it was a really cool couple of minutes. Really awesome move set. Great traps. That shield scene where, you know, he, he like jams it in to, to, the, rocks, the, to the, the rocks mm. and you can see it getting nearer and nearer to her throat. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, very, very cool hunt. Massive two gorilla thumbs up. Really, really enjoyed this movie. It was a triumph. Well done, guys. We're making a note here. <laughs> Huge, Huge success. success. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I like. I did quite like the end of the film, if I can just kind of go back through it. Just, so she, sure. ah, the predator is dead. Ha ha. And if you, you can relax, let's go home. Then cut to all the jerks that didn't help out <laughs> at the camp. And then she brings the head of the predator. Ha, I've got the head of the predator. And then she's like, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> what a pittance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she's alive. The dog's alive. He, man, he had three big spots against the predator. Yeah. And lived unprecedented predator's dead so 10 out of 10 successful hunt then cut the very simple drawings did you guys stick around to see the little mid credit scene oh no i, did, I, uh, I didn't see a mid dirty mcu scene. move here yeah you'll have to regale us so it's i'm 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 being generous here it's not really a mid credit scene but when the credits start rolling they have those like fancy credits like like the mcu or or a lot of big movies do where they have like illustrations or computer graphics zooming at you kind of like a summary of all the the major events and towards the end uh right before like the regular black screen credits uh you see Nehru with the uh predator head on the ground and all of her all of her villagers getting hype and then the camera turns and it shows three predator ships coming from the sky and about to land oh, and that's it oh okay get that sequel bait 
Exactly, but that's not like the the Predator where it's like, oh, I've got the Predator Iron Man armor and the war starts now. The war did not start. It did not continue. <laughs> it did not it did not get a sequel. Now, what about the flint lock pistol that she still has? This is the pistol from Predator 2, right? It is. It's yeah. the very same. So we know she that. turns into Murtaugh <laughs> <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so Predator 2 alien has this in his ship. So we know that at some point they get it back. Whether there was a trade, whether those three Predator ships landed and they wiped out everyone and they took the body of their fallen buddy back so that they couldn't leave any proof and they took the gun. Either that's the bait for the sequel or it's kind of left open-ended because we just know that, okay... They just wipe out everyone and take it. Yeah, you need something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it is a story thread from Predator 2 that no other movie, like, even talks about. But in the comic books of Predator, of which there's literally thousands, they have an explanation for this. Like, after Predator 2 came out, they basically go into the past and they tell the story of a pirate, Raphael Aldoini, something like that. And that's the name that's inscribed on the pistol in Predator 2. It says Raphael, you know, 1719. And in the comic books, they explain how a predator, like in this, in, in that time frame, met this pirate. They fought alongside each other as buddies, as a buddy cop comedy. <laughs> and when this pirate dies, he gives the predator this pistol and says, just, just take it. And the predator mimics that voice line, take it. And that's what he says to Murtaugh hundreds of years later. So he's just giving it as a sign of respect. Oh, uh, can I just ask you guys, which version of this film did you watch? Uh, I watched this on Disney Plus. Uh, uh, just regular? Streaming. Okay. I, I don't know what versions Ooh. there are. Okay, Matt? I watched it in English because I know where I know where you're going for. This movie has an English option. You can watch it in Comanche. But oh. I don't think that was available to me because in Canada, I don't know if this is the same for you guys, on Disney Plus, they have a separate tab that is called Star, uh, like, Stars. 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 Like, it, it's basically uh, more intense action movies and stuff, yeah. more adult entertainment. And in there, I couldn't find the option for the Comanche dub because they did want to check it out, see, you know, how it felt having, like, the, the entire movie be in the authentic languages. So I wasn't able to see it. So I just watched it in English. Mm, yeah, yeah, uh, Comanche dub here, dubbing into a foreign language, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly as you said, the actors shot the film speaking English originally, and then went into the recording booth afterwards and dubbed their lines into Comanche, and it's fucking diabolical. Oh, oh no. like the dubbing's Oh bad. my god, like these guys are amazing tribal actors, great physicality and believability, earnestness and inner strength. They are literally the worst dubbing artists I've ever been exposed to. And Acting I, and voice acting are different skills. Mm. And I watched Kung Fu Hustle <laughs> with the English and they're having a laugh, you know. You can see it when they're in the teepee. We get the horrendous kind of perfect podcast audio. So if you're listening to us, you could imagine that the three of us were in front of separate mics right against it. And so that's where you get this gotcha. warm, smooth caramel voice. And if they're in a teepee, their face isn't up against the microphone to get the warm, smooth caramel voice. And that's what you get. What about the lion? How they went after it. I have to find him. No, you need to rest. So there's a huge disconnect. Because they would have shot the film and are watching the film on a TV. And they can hear what it sounds like, but they make no effort to make it sound like that. Anyway, it's horrendous and don't let any knob end on the internet tell you different. Cowards. <laughs> should have shot the movie twice. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, absolutely. They should have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If given a choice, I'll always watch it in its native language with subs. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think like prior to release, I got smashed out of it hearing all of the good press this got beforehand, raised my expectations. It could just be a scummy advertisement masquerading as a review. Do you know? You, you don't know. But I'll watch it regardless because it's a Predator film. Same with Alien. Same with Terminator. You already have my money. But put your fears to rest. It was hailed as the second best Predator film. And yeah, it's easily number two behind Arnie. I think so, yeah. 
Like it's physically impossible to be better than Arnie because like the world will never be that enamored with steroids and Austrian meatheads <laughs> shouting cheesy one-liners to that extent. Uh, just a small quibble. The girl is mostly mute. There's a couple of lines. So by the very setup and character of the movie, it's harder to get truly emotionally invested with her. Because she spends so much time alone as well. So, mm. But it was great. Like the story, the progression, like excellently executed, really impressed. Such a stale scenario. This is the seventh film with a predator in it can feel so fresh. In general, like the story, it's, it's a coming of age story that happens to have a predator in it. Mm. And it's like brilliant decision. Uh, I love the story has one protagonist focus on her journey, her trials, her tribulations, setbacks and hurdles, her physical and mental resilience to face and overcome them and her maturation as a hunter. Top job. Yeah. So yeah, highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like a uh, second behind uh, Predator. So it would be like Predator, Prey, Predators, Predator 2, and at the very bottom, The Predator. Um, I don't know if like we're we're doing AVPs, but I, I think they're, they're its own separate. We're on the bottom stuff, of the so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you said that like it's a coming of age story. Just drop the Predator and that's great. Well, we can do that with other things in the film. Well, romantic comedies, but <laughs> it then turns into a horror movie. Because have you guys ever read or do you know of Archie versus the Predator? <gasps> no. Do tell. So this is a comic book the predator where, goes it's, to Riverdale. It, where it's madcap Riverdale hijinks to stay out of Riverdale. <laughs> it's a uh, Rivendell. <laughs> the predator shows up, skins Jughead, <gasps> skin, <laughs> skins uh, Betty. No. And yeah, that's the comic. That sounds amazing. Uh, it actually Splice, sounds awesome. Sliced it. Yeah. Sliced that so much. Yeah, yeah, definitely some, some screen grabs from that. It's just like, you know, a what if style story like what if the predator just shows up to town and uh, the predators fought all types of of people in the comics like i'm sure you guys know he's he's fought batman mm -hmm. you know there's an amazing batman versus predator comic from the 90s he's also fought tarzan he's also fought judge dread which uh, that way and that's a three-way actually that's judge dread versus alien versus predator that's badass that sounds awesome the comics do a lot of stuff uh with these characters but uh any any final thoughts from either of you before we wrap up yeah i just want to give my final thoughts on the movie sure. uh I actually watched it twice. Uh, I Mark. watched it on, Smelly Mark. <laughs> on Sunday night and then I watched it again on Monday morning. After my first viewing, I was like, it's okay. And I think the reason for that was because I was constantly hearing people on the net go, it's amazing, it's fucking incredible, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I, I kind of went in thinking it, it was going to blow my mind and yeah. it didn't quite. I was a bit pissed off with the kind of forcing the I'm just a girl uh, living in captivity <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how much it yeah. Yeah. Uh, plot to it so yeah my, my like first viewing was like it's good didn't love it but then I, I went back on Monday morning and I watched it a second time and it was so much better because I went in knowing what the movie was and I hadn't prejudged things and really fucking liked it. The actress, Miss Mid Thunder, what a fucking mm. name, knocked it out of the park. I think that the action, as far as Predator movies go, is definitely at the high end, maybe the best. <laughs> uh, I don't see anyone cutting down an entire jungle just to make it film. <laughs> Touche. Predator was cool. He felt more dangerous than some of the later versions, you know? Like, he felt more terrifying. Uh, so, like, obviously, Arnie's movie is number one. This is number two. Predator's number three. And then, for me, the fall is quite large, you know? <laughs> uh, Matt, what did you think of Prey? I have a decent list of pros and a con or two, but a very fresh premise. The movie's amazingly shot. Just some of the vistas and camera movements were like amazing. I think it was very decently paced, except for that one moment towards the end where I think it could have been drawn out just a little bit more. And I think it possibly has the best action overall in, in the series. 
like uh, Predator 2, not much is happening there. And except for like the big uh, commando raid on the village in the first movie, which is an incredible action scene. But overall, like everything here is is really nicely put together. Very inventive use of the Predator's uh, weapons, like the shield and stuff. I really like that they made the Predator a bit more interesting and scary again. I, I've seen like, people call this Predator because it's just called the Predator in the movie, but he's been denoted as being called the Feral Predator or the Primal Predator which I think is so okay. cool. And it, I think it sets up an intriguing premise for future films. I don't know if I want a direct sequel to this or they just, you know, a lot of, I've seen a lot of people talking online, oh, just put the Predator in feudal Japan or put the Predator in the future, like a future city or just do that. Don't try to make an interconnected story and try to wrap them all up like the Predator did because it just got bogged down with too much stuff. And I kind of agree with that. I like it when it's a bit more intimate and self-contained rather than trying to make a big Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, around it. And in terms of the cons, I don't really consider uh, the French accents like a, like a con. That's very specific to me. But I did find some of the dialogue to be a little too contemporary mm. here and there, where it yeah. took me out of it. Like the words that they're saying that th that's coming out of their mouths. It's like someone says, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> when a Native American say, like, yo, I got this, man. Take it home. Yeah, bring, bring it home. Back it's in the us, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. That's basically it in terms of, of negatives. Um, so what about you, Jay? Yeah, I, I just have four things I wanted to go through. Well, just kind of where my mind goes when I'm watching the film. At the start, she's returning to the settlement after a day's hunt. Uh, what's the toilet facilities like? Dig a hole in the field. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dig, dig a hole. Some some guy says, I'm going to pop a squat at some <laughs> point, And he just he's, goes behind the bushes, I guess. This guy, he's from 1983, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, that makes sense, especially when he has to go take a teepee. <laughs> yeah, hey terrible, terrible. Uh, the <laughs> tribe find a skinned snake or a giant errant penis. It was uncomfortable to look at. Okay, the bit where she spots a bear and is like, oh, hey, there's a real, ex real life explanation for the predator's tracks. There's a massive bear. Dog with her immediately draws the bear away from her. And I was like, oh, wow, dogs are just the best. Good boy. <laughs> a good boy. What would coffee do? Oh, she would roll on her belly and she would think that the bear would give her belly rubs. Oh, well, if that <laughs> might work, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the bear goes, uh, <laughs> uh, What would Cat McMuscles do? Uh, my cats would push me in the way of the bear <laughs> to, to distract the bear to eat me so that <sighs> the cats can run away. Oh, the I love it. Well, it, most of you get out alive. I think that's the main <laughs> thing there. And obviously, the, the big star coming out of this movie is Naru's dog, Seti, uh, <laughs> who's really called Coco, a dingo breed, aka Carolina dog, that would have been about 300 years ago. So, like, what you'd find there. I was wondering that. Uh, when the film is set. That's amazing. Uh, Amber Midthunder got Coco about two months before shooting to get familiarised, to bond with him. A big ball of energy that went mental on set. They showed early footage to friends and families and everyone's feedback was, more dog, we need more dog. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and she That's was good. She was like, you don't understand. We can't. We are using every usable frame of this dog. There's not one extra frame with the dog doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, big thumbs up on Coco. Massive thumbs up. Yeah, he's rocket, rocket to the moon. Dogs make <laughs> everything better. <laughs> I was like, yeah, three times he took on the Predator and, and lived. So I just, I just looked this up now because you, you've been calling the dog Seti and I've been calling the dog Sari. Oh God. And I've been like really nervous because I'm like, oh my God, they're called Seti? I've been calling him Crandall. But <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's, I, I just looked it up and it is Sari, S-A-R-I-I. -I. Not even close. That was not even close. Okay. <laughs> But wait, okay. Naru's dog, Sari, is really called Coco. And there we go. We'll see if I can splice it in. We don't know. Uh, you may have to go like, Sari, 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 <laughs> Sari, you know, and, and then you can splice as needed. And that does it. Wait, hang on. This isn't. Uh, well, it's Matt's <laughs> job. Yeah. And that does it for an extra Brucey bonus part of the Predathon. A fifth Predator film with Matt McBuzzles and your boys from OSW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming up on uh, What Happened? 
Well, uh, I'm not going to give any hints on what happened, but if people like this movie review of Prey, and if you're looking for more movie reviews by the three of us, then all you guys out there will have to stick around. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me some more Arnie quotes? I need I need more Arnie quotes to sustain me. You need to let off some steam. Ah, uh, Bennett, you want to put a knife in me and stick it around and see what's going on in there? <laughs> and come on, let's party. <laughs> I'm getting a bit of a Alex Wright kind of vibe going on. Ah, you see that you British jellyfish. <laughs> 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 oh, brilliant, brilliant. Jay, Stephen, what, where can people at home find you with, with the OSW reviews and all, all the rustlings and the whatnots and the colors and the feelings? Oh, that's a good layup, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. uh, you can check us out at oswreview.com. Check out uh, all our episodes. Fuck, free of charge. <laughs> and then now I'm Max favorite four to three full screen. There we go. He's a pro at this. Yeah. So yeah, and if you for some reason want to throw us a couple of uh, bucks in our like tin can, uh, you guys have dollar bills. Like, if you have coins, get get some coins. <laughs> throw the coins in the tin cup, <laughs> and uh, you can see some extra stuff. I don't, I don't know. You can see good stuff happening. Colors, shapes, feelings, hate mongering, <laughs> and all the rest. Ask noggeru.oswreview.com. Because the Brucey bonus of Predaton is on the books. In the pocket. Out of sight. Oh, bam! That's it. And we got it. So it's a goodbye from <laughs> free one. Take a boo. And the two and a half times, sadly, Golden Hogger Award winner, <laughs> Jay Hunter. And Matt McMuscle, baby! Yeah. I'm kissing my muscles right now. You can't yeah. see it. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs>